Connecticut State Representative Libby Florin is joining us. The representative uh, represents Greenwich and also part of Stanford. Representative Florin, how are you? Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Nice to hear the conversation between the representative and the senator. It's it's uh, you scored an 87 from the Connecticut League of Conservation Voters. Congratulations to you. Oh, thank you. So in, in terms of environmental, in, in terms of an environmental agenda, when I know you may be going into a special session in a few weeks, but you'll be coming up to a, the next full session in February, what would you like to see done at the top of the list? Well, I am always very um, involved in preserving and protecting our natural resources. So I would like to continue our program that we did reinstate of conveying unused uh, land, especially by the Department of Transportation, to the uh, city and town in which it, it resides to be kept in open space in perpetuity. What about some of the others? For instance, uh, we had Amanda Shane on before, who is from uh, the League of Conservation Voters, and she was giving us some of her wish list for the holidays, if you will. And she was talking about clean energy and clean water, forever chemicals, the PFAS and so on, and, and recyclables. Where would those be on your list? They're right up there. It's all part and parcel of what the conversation was before. These are not only good for the environment and good for people's health, but they're also good for the economy. And I think that's the key, is to find cost-effective, manageable, sustainable ways to implement it. I mean, when we brought out the um, banning of the plastic bags, it was unbelievable the hue and cry against that. Oh, you can't do it. People won't do it. Blah, blah, blah. But it's a mindset, and we made it manageable, and we did it in stages. You know, you, you had the incentive to the stores to go to paper, and then you went to really no bags. And so it's a mindset of bringing, bringing your own and, and recycling. So I, uh, I agree with a lot of what the Connecticut League of Conservation Voters wants. I do think that they should look at that scorecard again, even though I had a good score and I've been in their Hall of Fame. It, it isn't a good idea to give extra credit if someone is just sitting on the Environment Committee. That is at the whim of leadership. That doesn't really say much of anything. And they don't take amendments into account. We had a bottle bill that was going to increase, uh, I think, the contribution from $0.05 cents to $0.10. Cents. Well, it just was rife with bad economics. So a lot of people voted against it, and you were taken down in your environmental scorecard, even though that's probably one of the items that is nearest and dearest to a conservationist heart. Representative uh, McLaughlin, um can, can I ask you about what takes place on the national picture? Because this this is unusual, I have to say, on this program where we have one segment where uh, you, uh, Senator Huang, and Representative Florin are all members of the GOP, which I think is, is wonderful. And, and you're all being uh, given uh, a lot of credit for your environmental stance. But at the same time, there will be some listening to this program saying, look, you're members of the GOP, but the president, the head of the party, is a guy who wants to pull you out of the Paris Accords and who doesn't believe in climate change. So to them, they may be thinking, how can you be a Republican on the statewide level and then have and then be supporting this guy who's in the White House who doesn't believe what you're believing for an existential threat? Sure. So uh, I'm not quite sure what the uh, um, what, uh, what, what what you're asking. I think you're asking, um, you know, how, what is it? Uh, what, what's the experience of, uh, uh, you know, of serving in that context? And, uh, you know, the way I think about my service is uh, it, is uh, to uh, you know to my district and and um, and I think uh, you know all uh, the you know, my colleagues uh, put their uh, you know both R and D you know put their uh, the needs of their constituents um, you know above the needs of their party and um, and I think the environment is one of those issues that we have tend to you know coalesce around. We've certainly disagreed. On, uh, uh, on certain uh, uh, on certain issues, uh, but even at a national level, um, uh, when the invest solar investment tax credit was up for debate and uh, for an extension in I believe 2015, um, there was Republican leadership uh, in the Senate that helped get that through under uh, Senator Pat Toomey. So, um, you know, there 
there may be disagreements um, in in leadership uh, from you know one administration to the next, but I think it would be uh, an oversimplification to say that uh, uh, here in Connecticut uh, we don't all put our heads together uh, to figure out ways to preserve our our natural resources. Senator Wong, I, I think. It has no party label whatsoever in the state of Connecticut. The international renowned leaders that I cited earlier are fantastic people. We don't ask them if they're Democrat, Republican. They're leaders in that area. But when you look at the history, Teddy Roosevelt, John Muir, who founded the, the Sierra Club, mm-hmm. and, and Julie Balaga, who's our beloved uh, advocate in the Westport area, who ran many years ago as as an environmental advocate, strong Republican, it isn't a Democrat-Republican issue. Clean water, open land, an ability to breathe in clean air and enjoy the Long Island Sound, it has no party. Whether the national debate is so divisive, at the end of the day, my ability to walk in open space of the Aspatuck Land Trust, to sail or walk in, in the coastlines of the Long Island Sound, no one asks me what party I'm in. They just know it's part of Connecticut, and I'm going to do my best to try to preserve that for future generations. Representative Florin, your thoughts on national versus state? I couldn't say anything more or any more articulately than those two gentlemen did. And I I think that one of the real takeaways is we work for the people that elected us, and we follow our conscience. And I think all three of us are quite representative of the vast majority of elected officials in Connecticut who want to preserve and protect our country and our planet.